Okay, so we're going to go over some cylinder head service procedures. Um, we'll look at the head first and then we'll do some of the inspections and measurements and we'll go over how to disassemble and what to look for. So the first thing we're going to look at on the cylinder head is the check the flatness. Um, it's important you're going to need to know, look at your uh, service manual and get the correct specs. Um, but you should be looking at at least three positions along the, the length of the head. So at one edge, the second edge, and the third edge. Um, to, in order to do this, once you look at your spec, you're going to get your, your thickness gauge, and you're going to use that to see whether it protrudes or, or extends underneath the straight edge in all of the positions. So other than the three positions here, we are also going to do uh, diagonal, corner to corner, in both directions, and then across the cylinder head in several locations as well. All right, um, next thing we're going to look on the cylinder head, uh, and this is, uh, I'm going to show you this. This is the, the same sled gauge we uh, use on, on some of the other engine measurements. It is just designed to compare everything to a, a flat plane. Um, I have gone ahead and I've, uh, we zero it out, check it that it is true zero, and then we simply look at and move it onto each of the valves. All right, this one is 59 thou. All right, and then we move it over and we can check the other one and turn that up a little bit. Uh, you can check that one, and this one is also 59 thou. Now, that check is for uh, valve recession into the head. Um, sometimes you will find that spec in your book. Other times we're going to flip it over. We're going to look at the other way and, and basically we're going to look at how much the, the, the stem is extended to on the top side. But looking at the recession, uh, if you have a spec and what you are checking for here, is where between my valve seat and my valve face uh, and as they wear, it will allow the valve to recess into the head a little further. Okay, so here we have the cylinder head turned over the other way. Uh, and, and another common uh, inspection on this would be for my installed valve height. Now, you can use a vernier caliper for this, all right? Um, what you need to measure is from the machine surface at the bottom of this uh, of the valve spring until to the bottom of the washer or that is, is on the retainer all right um, looking at that dimension and 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 comparing that to your specifications all right I'm going to remove a couple of valves and I'm going to show you that there is a better method of, of actually measuring that and it's with the uh, the spring out of the way. All right, so I'm just going to keep the rolling here, and we're going to uh, cover this. So we're going to use a spring compressor to remove the spring. Uh, this is going to sit against the bottom, uh, the head of the my valve, and this part will uh, compress the, over the, the retainer. All right. So when you go to uh, remove these. Um, don't have the handle with too much tension on it. I'm just gonna. Don't have the handle with too much tension on it. Uh, you want it uh, about three quarters way, and then simply nice and easy close it. And you can see one lock has already fallen off, and the other one is easily removed. And then simply release the handle slowly. To control it, you don't want it to fly across the room. And there we have it. It is a part. Now, I'm going to flatten this back down. See, my valve is falling out. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take the retainer. I'm going to place it back over the valve. And all right, place it back over the valve, let it go down to the bottom, 
I'm going to use my two locks and I'm going to put them on the valve and then I'm going to simply pull up on that retainer. All right. Now that the spring is out of the way, it is much easier to measure from the machine surface up to the bottom of that retainer. All right. And then to take the valve out, we simply remove the locks. So on the valve, this is my valve stem. This is my tip, my lock grooves. We have our, the head of the, head of the valve, the neck, the valve face is the silvery part right here and the margin is the dark part at the end and I'm going to go over on the board later and draw these all out so that we have them all right okay so I'm going to go ahead and take another valve out while we have it here and just to show you and we're going to do uh, that was an exhaust valve so we'll take out the uh, uh, intake valve as well Again, gentle pressure, remove the locks, nice and easy, take it off. All right, so now I have two valves removed. All right, just to compare them, um, you'll see that there is a noticeable size difference. The exhaust valve is always the smaller valve intake valve is is a little bigger uh, and that is to make it easier for air to be pushed in if it's turbocharged or drawn in if it's naturally aspirated and when the exhaust valve opens uh, we we have exhaust blowdown and then the piston acting as a pump to push the exhaust out so not as much trouble putting the uh, getting the exhaust to go out the, the smaller valve so now looking at the surface of the cylinder head uh, we want to look at a couple of things um, these are the valves that were out of the, the, the two holes that I have apart here. I want to hold this up and, and hopefully we can see this on the, uh, on the camera. You can see that there is a very wide silver or section there and that is a very wide contact pattern on the exhaust valve. On the intake valve we have a, a similar thing where you can see the silver uh, section here would be where the the valve was making contact with the seat on the head itself we can see that the, those those dimensions are, are, are pretty uh, pretty much the same on the valve seat itself all right something else that we want to check on the, the the cylinder head before we do a whole bunch of work to it is just do an inspection and look for places where there may be cracks in the cylinder head. Um, these tend to be in, in areas where uh, components are very thin, all right, or between uh, maybe a high pressure area and, and a hole. Um, if you don't have uh, Magnaflux to do this, uh, you can have the head pressure tested where they will put a, a sheet over it and, and pressurize a couple of the galleries and then submerge it in, in water to see if there's any air bubbles. Um, another t uh, thing to do would be to use some dye penetrant, spray some dye penetrant on it and see if there's any cracks uh, uh, present. Um, these will give you the uh, kind of an indication of a crack if you're using either of those methods. Uh, these are the uh, inserts for the um, pre-cup chambers. Now another check that you can sometimes do on a, a cylinder head when you have them and you have all of the, the, the valves uh, loose, uh, all the springs are removed but they're just sitting in their bore uh, and it's a, this is really not a, a, a professional uh, check that you would do but it is a good quick check of if you just want to look at the condition of the head and it's called a valve deflection 
So with the valve sitting tight against its seat, there is no movement here because it's basically a cone uh, pulling into a tapered wedge. All right, but if I take it off its seat a little bit, what I can try to do is move the valve sideways. And what that will allow you to do as you go through is very quickly see that each valve has the same amount of movement or you may end up where you find one that has uh, a lot of wear and which will just give you a lot of, of excess movement and it uh, then you could start maybe by inspecting that valve um, before you get too far into uh, uh, machining the whole thing. So what we're going to do now is inspect some of the uh, other components on the cylinder head. Um, first one we're going to do is look at the valve guide dimension. Alright, so we're going to use a small hole gauge which is a tapered wedge in two half, half diameter shells and as we tighten it down it spreads the wedge out. So we're going to leave it a little loose, we're going to install it into the hole uh, and at the very top surface of the hole. We're just going to screw it out slightly until we get a little bit of drag and you can see that my, 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 uh, my hole gauge is just suspending by itself so I'm going to pull it out and then I'm going to take it and use my micrometer to check its dimension. Alright very simple task, just hold it, adjust it in, take your reading, and then uh, with all of this I would say the most important thing is to write it down. Uh, we are at 346,000 uh, of an inch, so uh, write it down. Now, as I said, what we're going to do is we're going to make that measurement in three positions along that guide, along its length. All right. Then what we are going to do is in the valve that sits in that bore, we are going to use the micrometer and we are going to measure it in three dimensions or three positions along that, that guide where it rubs. Don't go outside of where there is any wear on that that valve guide or you're, you're not going to have a, a, a true reading. What we are looking for is the difference inside between my valve stem and my valve guide. Alright, that clearance is for oil to be present in the between the two components. Allows for lubrication and the removal of heat. An excess amount of room will allow oil to be drawn into the engine and end up either burning in the exhaust or the intake valve. So now we're looking at the valve spring itself. Now this spring is a double wound spring. It means that I have a heavy uh, circular uh, spring on the outside and then on the inside if you can just see it there is another spring in there and it is actually wound in the opposite direction and but it is a flat spring alright so when we're looking at the springs what we're going to be looking for is the first thing is simply to make sure that it is square and you can see that this spring we are almost touching on this side in this location and as I turn it around now it's starting to move away from the bottom and now it's touching at the bottom and moving away from the top so that tells me that this spring has a little bit of distortion to it now the problem with having a distortion to it is that when the valve is being pushed off of its seat and, the, and opening that this spring is going to basically be kicking it a little bit to the side and it ends up creating more wear between the valve stem and the valve guide so that would be one thing that would fail this spring right away. Okay, the next thing that we will be, do be doing is measuring the valve spring. There is a spec for the free length. So with no tension on the spring, we simply use a vernier caliper and we can um, turn it on and we can me measure 
the free length. All right, quite easy to do. Um, next, and now you can actually measure it using this machine, and this is the valve spring uh, tester. So we can bring the plunger down until it hits, and we can simply look at, at the, the, the ruler on the side and see what the free length is. Uh, depending on the engine information that you have, you may look at other things now, and I'm going to adjust the camera down a little bit so that you can see this. Um, the, the, the next thing that you could look at is what the installed height would be. And as I move that down a little bit, you will see that uh, not only did my spring compress and I would use the, my needle to see uh, what I have uh, changed it to, but I would read how many pounds of force I have added to that thing, uh, to the tension on that spring, all right? Um, some specs may give you that. Some specs may also include what the tension should be at the height when it would be all the way open. And you could compare that to the spec. All right, now, um, guideline is anything less or anything more than 5% from the uh, spec should replace the spring. So we're going to install the valves back into the cylinder head, but before we do that, and I want to have the piece in my hand to show you, you can see where some of these valves have just a retainer on the top. Those are the intake valves. Other uh, retainers also include a rotator on the top as well. Now the rotator is this component here. It, it is multiple pieces, and it's actually three. We have a top plate, a bottom plate, and inside in here, we have a spring that is uh, a coil that is wrapped around in a circle around the outside. When the valve is being opened and the rocker is pushing down on it, it actually squeezes this slightly. That gets the, the spring in there to lie over, and then when the, the valve starts moving back up, it moves back. That causes the, the, the rotator to uh, rotate the valve stem and the valve in its seat. Um, we use that on the exhaust valves to help prevent carbon from building up between the valve seat and the valve face. All right, so we'll go ahead with these. Uh, this is my exhaust valve spring, so we're going to put it on here. Uh, my retainer goes on. My rotator. And then we simply use the compressor. Put the bottom part on the head of the valve. We start to bring nice, easy, slow pressure on it. Lock it down. Install the two cone locks into their groove and hold them in place while you slowly release the valve spring and we have one installed. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. Now, this job uh, usually would go a little easier with a, a second hand. Uh, in some cases, you may want to have a, a magnet handy to pick up a lock if it gets trapped. If you're lucky, you don't need it. All right, uh, you can see the, uh, the locks are in place. And again, I'm going to slowly release the spring. And now it's sitting there. Um, once you have all your, your, your springs and everything installed, turn the cylinder head back up flat. Um, use a rag and cover the tops of the valves. Now take a hammer, and give it a light tap on each of the valves. All right, hold the rag. What we are doing 
is just testing to make sure that the locks are fully engaged in their seat and that everything is going to hold. By putting the rag over, if something comes loose, I'm going to have it here and it won't be across the room or in my forehead. Alright, everything is good. The last thing that we could do to inspect this is that, and just to show you the difference, hopefully the camera will be able to pick this up. I'm going to put a line on this valve that has a rotator and I'm going to put a line on this valve that does not have a rotator. I'm going to give it a couple of light taps with a hammer. And you can see that this line is, has rotated a little bit. If I do the same thing with the other valve, no movement. So the, the idea of the rotator is that it, it rotates the valve and at the valve seat and the valve uh, uh, face that if there was any carbon or anything stuck in there that we would grind it away or, or bounce it out of the way. Now we talked about the valve installed height uh, before we were taking it apart. If this was a, a case where we had machined uh, either the valve seat or the valve face uh, and reassembled everything, I would I then need to repeat that process of checking the valve installed height because as we machine the face or the seat, this stem will rise up. That will make, uh, make the spring have less tension on it. To accommodate that, we can uh, install a shim underneath that if we need to uh, correct that installed height. Okay, so I've drawn these out on the board and I've gone ahead and labeled them. This is my valve and parts of the valve. We have the valve head, which is the top part. We have the valve margin, which is the part above where the machining happens for the valve face. The valve face should be one smooth angle all the way through. From the point where that machining stops to the stem is referred to as the neck. The stem is the long part where we, that fits through the valve guide. Uh, at the bottom, we have either a single or multiple lock grooves that the locks will hold into. We have our valve tip on the end, and we have a chamfer on it, all right? Um, when we look at the, the, the head itself, uh, the, the black part here is actually uh, the material of the head. Um, we have three angles, and I'm, it's hard sometimes to tell them apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little division here to uh, kind of highlight each of them. The topping angle is the very first one, right? And, and if this is parallel, I'm going to say that just for a number, this is around 15 degrees. All right? The valve seat angle, 45 degrees. That is from here to here. And then the throating angle, 60 degrees. Now those are th uh, three arbitrary numbers. I'm just using them as, as kind of an example. So if we have the valve seat machined to 45 degrees, we will machine the valve face to either 44 or 46 degrees one degree either angle either way on this and what that gives us is an interference angle so that they are not at the same angle we do not want it to have a broad contact across here across the whole surface ideally we will have a very narrow contact pattern about half to two-thirds down the, the distance of this um, valve face, all right? And the reason for that is as we have wear on our valve, that that contact area will become wider and it will become closer to the valve margin. So once again, the valve margin is a critical measurement. Having enough material at the end makes sure that the valve is thick enough that it does not overheat and, and burn out. 
or, or, or just got her out. All right. Um, we'll talk about it uh, some more, but uh, what we're going to stop that.